Hi everyone, Simona here from Vector Twist. This is day 6 of our 12th day of Christmas series, and today we're going to play around with the appearance palette. Now with the appearance palette, you can do some really neat tricks to your shapes or text. As you can see on the artboard, you have the text Happy Holidays. I picked a retro font, and just in case you like the font, it is called Santa Fe LED Plane. First, let's open up the appearance palette, and let me drag it out because we're going to apply quite a few styles. First, we need to select our text, and then let's set the fill to none. We're going to be solely working with the appearance palette, so we do not want to have any fill or stroke applied. Once we've done that, we'll go down to the bottom of the appearance palette, and we're going to add a new fill. Now here in the fill dropdown, let's pick a red, and then right after, with the text still selected and the fill highlighted, we're going to add a stroke. So I'll go again down to the bottom and add a new stroke. As you can see, it applied the new stroke right above the fill. When working with the appearance palette, we have to pay attention to which order we're going to apply each element. Now, as you can see, we have a black stroke applied and it is overlapping here on the text. So first let's change the stroke to a white and let's set it to two points, but that doesn't really look very good. The first thing we want to do is and drag the stroke underneath the fill. Now we fixed the overlapping part, but the stroke is not two points anymore. So we're going to add an effect. So down at the bottom, with the stroke selected, we're clicking a new effect, and we're going to Path, Offset Path. Now in the pop-up, let's set the offset to one point. Let's check the preview. If we like it, we'll click OK. Now I have the little arrow here next to the stroke. You can collapse it or expand it and then it will show you everything that you have applied just to the stroke. After that, we're going to add a new fill. So we're going down to the bottom, click Add New Fill. We'll drag it underneath the stroke. We'll change the color to black. And as you can see right now, you don't see anything. So we have to add again new effects. So with the fill in black still selected, let's open up Add New Effect. And we're going all the way up to Distort and Transform and choose Transform. Now here in the Transform pop-up window, we do not want to scale anything, we want to move things. So in horizontal and vertical move, we're going to set one point for both. We'll check the preview, and still we can see nothing really happened. We have to do one more step. Where you can see here where it says copies, it's set to zero. We want to set our copies much higher. Let's set seven copies and let's see what that looks like. Now when you check the preview, you can see that the black fill has been offset seven times by one point both horizontal and vertical. And if we want to have it bigger, we can just increase the copies and see what happens. Now this is really great if you want to create a drop shadow and you do not want to use any other effects. After that, we're going to add again another new fill. This time we're going to set it to a green and I'm going to drag it below our black. Select it, add another new effect. Again, I'm going to path offset path. In here I'm going to set it to offset by five points. I check the preview and then I press OK. But it's not all. We want to add another effect, the transform effect again. So back to add effect, distort and transform, open up the transform box and then we're going to set horizontal two points, vertical three points. We'll check the preview and then we're going to add let's say six copies. Then we press OK and then we're going to continue. Let's add another fill, set it back to black, drag it underneath the green fill, and let's add another offset and transform. So back to add new effect, offset path, let's offset it by seven points, check the preview, we have it offset just a little bit, you can see it here, press OK, next back to distort and transform, transform, and here again we're going to set it to two points and three points for vertical move, check the preview, and see how many copies we need. I'd say six copies again, and then we press OK. I think we're almost done. Let's add one more fill. Again, this time we're going to drag it underneath the black fill again. Let's set the fill to white instead of black. Add a new effect, offset path. Let's set it to 14 points. Let's check the preview. We'll press OK. Add another effect of transform. Again, set the move to two points for horizontal and vertical three points. Copies six and we'll check the preview. If we like it, we'll press OK. And then maybe one more. One more fill. Instead of white, we're going to choose black again. 
drag it all the way underneath the white. Again, we need to add an effect, so we'll select it, go back, offset path. Again, let's do 14 points. And one more time, distort and transform. We'll choose transform. And here we're going to set horizontal move, two points, and vertical move, four points. Copies, we're going to choose six. Let's check the preview. And now we just have a small black underneath our white here. And let's press OK. Now it looks pretty retro, but I think we're missing one more element. I think I would like to add a fill on top of the red. So in my appearance panel, I'm going to scroll all the way up to the top where I see the fill. I'm going to add a new fill. Of course, it's choosing red again, but I'm going to change this. I'm opening up the drop down. These are all the swatches I have, and I already have black dots here in my swatches panel. And then I'm going to add those on top. It looks a little dull, so I'm going to change the opacity from normal to multiply. And since I think the dots are just a little bit too big, I'm going to add an effect. So back down to add new effect, distort and transform, we'll open up transform. And this time we're going to scale it. So let's scale it by 50%. So I'm just putting 50% for both horizontal and vertical. I'll check my preview. And of course, everything got shrunk. Not just the dots, but the text itself. All we have to do here in the options, make sure that we uncheck transform objects and check transform patterns. And as you can see, now it just transformed the pattern. And then we press OK. And that is it. And the best part about all of this is that we can change the text. The text is still live text. So if I don't want to write Happy Holidays anymore, if I want to write Merry Christmas, all I have to do is change the text and my style is applied to it. Now let me just undo this. Select the text with all of your appearances applied. Open up the graphic styles and then drag it into the graphic styles. After that, you can double click it and call it something. Let's say call it retro style. And then for example, if you type a new text and then apply the style that I've dragged into the graphic style panel. Watch what happens. Nothing is lost. I've saved my appearance styles and now applied it to the new text. And of course, this is not all. Once you've dragged your style into the graphic styles, you can easily make changes and then drag a new one into the graphic style. I've already done this, so let me just show you. I've changed the color slightly. So if I apply my new style here, and now we have even a funkier retro style. But let's just go back to the original one. Now this is how we started with. If I select it again, of course, I still have all of my styles here in the appearance panel. But once you've dragged it into the graphic styles, it is saved. And really the best part about this, that your text is still live, nothing has been outlined, and you can change it anytime you would like to. And this is it. If you liked it, please leave a comment below. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel here. And at the same time, don't forget to head over to VectorTwist.com and check out more tutorials and articles on the blog. And I'll see you tomorrow with our next tip. So stay tuned. Thank you.